Hey guys, welcome back to ESL TV for the EPS Germany Winter 2014 League of Legends Grand Finals. Now we're finally underway with what, in fact, is the Grand Finals here between Infaculty and Plain Ducks. And we're already in picks and bands as well here, so I'm going to drop us in in just a few seconds because hopefully, hopefully we're going to have a good one. I mean, let's do it. You wonder, Infaculty again, you know, team playing the expansion tournament next weekend, whether or not they're going to show any secret cards or anything like that. So we get a card, so there's a Fate Band coming in. Or they're going to play really standard. And just kind of chill with what they do have and obviously kind of uh leave the mystery up to next week and you know obviously keep in mind you know the puma zio to keep that three german rule obviously zazis isn't here to play in the top lane forum so they're obviously a different beast when they have their full lineup but they've been playing pretty damn strong today anyways yeah uh i haven't seen too much of a change i think zaya's actually played pretty well overall i think we saw a gnar and a cassidy in from him previously so yeah, we've seen some uh, some good play from him. It looks like we're actually going to be seeing him on Nureya straight up out off the bat, picked up. And uh, in the meantime, Corky as well locked in. So uh, again, no surprises there. Highly contested AD carry alongside Lucian. I wouldn't be surprised if we see once again this Corky Lucian matchup. I think the only surprise we've had other than that, look, Jason, is the Draven. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, and it didn't really work out well. It was actually not on Sedrin, though. It was on, in their opponent uh, when they are playing against the Wolves on Crazy Caps. That's right, yeah. Um, but they were able to work around that one. But at least we picked up for obvious, though, it looks like, in the jungle. And really in that top lane. Corky on the other side, though, for playing Ducks. And I'm just going to see what they're going to pick up here. I wonder if they're going to go for a Janna as a support. Or well, that would be crazy. <laughs> or a Thresh. I mean, I'm not really, you know, using my crystal ball, crystal ball too hard here, kind of putting those names out there. But... Now I see strong picture. They can go for their jungler as well, kind of leave things almost hidden when it comes into their top and mid lane pick. But I'm expecting a jungler support here. Yeah, I think uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Janna for the bot lane. It's been such a popular composition, the Corky Janna. And uh, I mean, the only other kind of Corky lane that surprised me was Alistair. So we had a Corky Alistair just the game previously. So uh, I don't think we're going to be seeing that one again. They should have got crushed in that lane. They got so lucky. Yeah, they should have. It should have gone a lot differently to the way it did, but. As we go into this one, N-Faculty up against Playing Ducks. Playing Ducks had to fight hard to get here, N-Faculty not so much, and we'll see if that affects the uh, the route that these guys take in this best of... I think it's best of three. I didn't end up finding out. It is best of three. Oh, it's kind of... I knew it was best of three. Oh. And it's best of three... Uh, yeah, maybe not. Okay, so anyway, Sona and Corky is going to be the lane. We've seen that before. Very pokey, very nice. Uh, got that sustain as well, so it'll be interesting to see what we see in response to that. The bot lane has yet to be revealed, though. In the meantime, they're opting to reveal their mid lane choice. It's going to be most likely going to be seeing an Oriana for the first time. Uh, obviously, he's just hovering over that for now. Uh, but while 20 seconds tick away, talk to me a little bit about that, the Elise pick. Because to me, I've always thought that this is a jungler we weren't going to be seeing. And now on 420, this is going to be the third or the, yeah, the third Elise we've seen today. A lot of people don't like her for good reason. Obviously, she has to stay in the jungle, which is nice. Um, she's a little bit slow in terms of wave clear, though. Uh, when it comes to that, obviously, that's we see the Hunter's Trailblazer being picked up. Uh, we'll see how it does, does against Pantheon, though, in this one. But the Orianna gets to see perfect on that yet again here. We saw him play it in the first game uh, a little bit earlier on. Wouldn't be surprised if he's up against an Ari in the mid lane for that charm and that Pantheon stun to come in. Pretty easy kills in that lane. Not to mention Ari, obviously, very, uh, very mobile here. But I don't know why they keep sitting on Blitzcrank over and over again when they're not going to pick him. But they need a top laner. They need a mid laner here. I'm going to leave you in the faculty with their support as a last pick, funny enough. Yeah, an interesting choice of uh, pick order. I'm not sure why they chose to not reveal their support and instead, you know, maybe keep the Aurelia for uh, a little later on. I mean, Aurelia is one of those top laners which you don't really want to pick blind. Uh, there's some, quite a few eh. matchups that can be tough for her. No, nah, there's, there's really not a tough one. Like, it's, it's pretty just... Like, the worst is even, like, for her. That's why that's why she's so highly valued. Like that's why we've seen her ban so often today and first pick for them. Because there's so many ways you can play a Ray. Like she's one of those really high skill level champions or skill stealing champions that you can play her so differently. Like she can almost always have a safe lane for the most part. Except maybe like Jax. But she beats Jax early and Jax beats her later on. Okay. But Lissandra's gonna be tough. <laughs> like, I mean, just a ranged mage up there's gonna be a little bit tough, but he should be fine though. Level up the heat and style, get a lot of healing at least. Like that's a really scary lane for uh, Koi to be up against with that at least an Aurelia combo if they do go for it. But the, the Zyra. This would be something hmm. new. A support? No. Oh, but still, Soraka, another a new support yet to uh, make an appearance today. And uh, I guess perhaps they're trying to beat Sustain with Sustain. I mean, fight you fire can't with fire. You can't out-sustain the Unicorn. 
the unicorn, the, the ambulance. Dryad. Yeah. Um, that ugly a, annoyance that that's Soraka gonna be, is. It's going to be in the hands of Soraka. I'm um, in the hands of Mountain, sorry. As I uh, <laughs> Have you seen what Mountain looks like? I haven't. Like, I, I was showing you earlier on that he's that like, really big, tall guy. Right. He's playing like Soraka. It's like seeing Libic play Zyra. It's just like... Is really buff. Like, like Libic was as, is almost as tall as me, and he has like 10, 15, 20 kilos on me in muscle as well. So you think about those, and it's kind of really scary to think about this big, tough man playing this really soft, squishy. Hey, girl squishy. Support. You could you could build tanky Soraka if you wanted to. It would be odd, but you could. As uh, I think we're just waiting. We've lost, we lost a player, I believe. Yeah. We lost Mountain, the man we were just talking about. I'm sure, exactly what's going on. I'm even looking at the uh, the German stream, and they have a wait screen up. Apparently, I think we started too early. <laughs> I, I'm looking at it right now, and, it, and they have like a 30 second countdown, and I'm just like confused. Did we do like a pick and ban phase that wasn't a pick and ban? Was it like a practice? No, that was that was legitimate pick and bans, but it wasn't me saying go. No. Huh. Well, we're about to find out in 20 seconds because that's what the countdown says. Mountain is fixing himself, fixing himself back onto the uh, server. Is that? Oh no! I just unleashed a yawn. Obviously preparing for this best of three, trying to get as uh, into it as possible. <laughs> okay, apparently Mountain's runes didn't save. So. Uh, okay. Oh, this went to a quick break, that's why. Okay, so it looks like we'll be starting this one back up again. And we should have this game underway here. Remember, in faculty up against Playing Ducks. And I guess we can go ahead and show you the picks yet again. These should be uh, pretty quickly as I hit the button a little bit late. But we already do know what they're going to be playing here. I'm going to have that Lissandra versus an Aurelia in the top lane. Pantheon versus Elise in the jungle. How good? How good's your memory? Syndra up against Oriana mid lane. Very nice bot lane. And Corky with Sona up against a Lucian and a Soraka. I'm impressed, Jason. Five champions. Don't even. Don't even. The ten champions, I should say. Like, come on. You want to tell you what was played earlier? Like pick by pick. Can I take your notes and then do it? I don't have any notes on that stuff. Okay, so. No, uh, I do it from memory. Ready? Okay, tell me about the uh, first game we casted. Okay, don't remember. <laughs> oh, I, got so, I, I got so excited, I was like, wait, what, Jason? No, I don't have that kind of memory, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, like that guy that kind of flew around in a helicopter and drew like a pic pixel perfect uh, overview of New York? I wish. That'd be sweet. Like 45 minutes in a helicopter and he drew the whole thing. Gosh. Fantastic. Apparently, my brother and my niece, who I haven't seen in. Um, Ever since she was really young, I'm talking like a year old. No, oh, even wow. even younger than that. Uh, actually, maybe like a, yeah, maybe just just over a year old. Okay. She's now almost three, and apparently they're watching me uh, watching me here today. Oh. I think my shirt really brings out my eyes, which I know is a backhanded compliment from my brother. But uh, he's balding and I'm not. So <laughs> what's up, Brian? Either way, as you can see, the pick's <laughs> almost done here. I'm sure I'm gonna get a message from him a little bit later on about that. You're just, you're going off on that one. He's like straight up balding. I'm green, but he's like just like you're I'm green. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah. My dad started grain and balding at like 21, but I started um, grain at 21. My brother started balding at 21. Okay. So, at least he's not grain, but he has not much hair left. So, so there's that. And funny enough, he's always been bigger than me my entire life in terms of like buffness. I, I've always been tall. Well, not always been taller, but I think I'm more buff than he is now. What's up? Whoa. Yeah. I, think I, kick, I think I kick his butt. I mean, he's in the army. I actually think he's still in the army, so he probably does like 101 ways to kill me with his thumb. But, but. I could probably out arm wrestle him. It's all about and technique, that's where it actually. Arm is all about technique. So, well, I think I could wrestle him. There you go. No Brian recliners for you. It's a, a thing that happened when we were younger. Anyways. Anyways. Didn't get awkward at all. Not what, not whatsoever. So, uh, while Jason reminisces, we will be ready to jump on into this one. You can hear the soothing tones of Sona, as uh, we're going to be ready to kick this one off. So we're on to the rift, and we'll see where they're going to take the uh, early couple of well, the first two minutes. We've seen a kind of very little variation in the start. Of course, it's pretty standard. It's going to be interesting to see, of course, the, how these top lane matchup works out. Myself saying that uh, Aurelia is going to have a tough time, and Jason saying that Aurelia never has tough time. So we'll see. Yeah, it's just it's never like bad. Like she, uh, she has so much to stay in lane. Like if you think about how she was before she was nerfed, it was a little bit different, obviously. But you know, here, obviously, it's going to be a little tough to go up against um, Melisandre, but. It's really not going to be that big of a deal for her. Like, she'll be able to heal up with the Crystalline Flask and the Health Pots. It'll be almost impossible to shove her out of lane unless you have Pantheon come into gank. And so, without that gank, and of course, Pantheon is... We've seen some fantastic ganks from Pantheon earlier. It's such a, such a strong jungler with this kind of flash stun 
combination. And uh, I mean, he exerts quite a lot of damage, especially with this warrior uh, jungling item, or an enchant, I should say, on the what's usually the ranger's trailblazer. It's going to be interesting to see if he can make something happen early. Yeah, guys, we do know the stream is uh, a little bit laggy. Uh, unfortunately, I think we can do about until this game is over. So I have to kind of bear with this here. It might be a little bit of a radio cast, but we'll get it fixed for game number two here. Remember, it's a best of three. Winner will take home 2,500 euros. Loser takes home just a measly 1,200. Measly. Someone previously suggested if you do want to kind of resolve this issue, you can actually go to the without the which what's the channel is it ESL TV the German stream and then just use our audio if they did want to listen to our cast yeah I guess you could do that it's an option regardless and will be resolved as soon as this game concludes they might not be looking at what we look at though that's oh it may make a little less sense but at least you can get more of us <laughs> well, less less our casting you know so. yeah we'll see as uh, we jump on into this one seems like a pretty standard start for both bottom lanes gonna be starting at their Krugs and Gromp respectively and the top lane matchup that we're very interested to see as well, of course, will be going on in the meantime. Still, I'm a little loopy right now. I'm just trying to switch like positions just to see. It's just to annoy me. Uh, okay, let's get a little serious now. Let's try. As uh, all starting to uh, kick off. Of course, this Corky Lucian matchup, not no stranger to this one already. We've seen it almost every single time, every game we've cast. And uh, both are probably, probably the highest favoured AD carries at this stage of the game. Or stage of the patch, I should say. And uh, it's going to be a bit of an uphill struggle for Zio. You can see he's already kind of taken a big beating going for that flask and health pot start. Pretty standard for Aurelia anyway, but he's going to need every single sip of that to maintain and farm away against this Lissandra. I've always wondered what a health pot tastes like. That's a great question. I think it's like... Just red food coloring, like they, it's not actually red normally. Water, or is it like juice? Oh, it's definitely juice. Mm, like apple juice or like cherry well, juice? Well, no, like health juice. Health? <laughs> Do you not know what health, health tastes like? No. Oh, you've never had health. You is should it, have does health. Does it taste like iron? Uh, it just tastes like health. I, I, there's no oh, way to okay. describe it. It's like saying that grass is green. What's green? You know. You just need to know. <laughs> well, anyways, we're gonna have now obvious heading over towards the blue buff here. Sejin again, trying to be really good from this bomb side. Remember Mountain, almost using the Ancient Coin to keep his region up. Almost when he heals, it's taken away from his own health now, not his mana. And again, the poke can be very deadly. Help him try to push the wave out. We'll just back away though, so he can put out a little bit more pressure, a little bit more damage early on. But Sorok just becomes a beast later on. And Brokey, oh, not going to get started up there, but going to be keeping Mountain health alive here oh, as he lands those star calls. Temp top side, you're seeing again. You know, Koi, 17, 17. Like, look at that. I mean, yeah, he's popped like a couple of pots. Two. Yeah, he's popped two pots and one crystalline fast pot, but he's equal in CS. Like, he's not really having that hard of a time here. It's just a little bit more of an annoyance than anything, and he's definitely going to be a really powerful later on if he can get kind of free farmer. If any, if any of the junglers really come in to intermingle uh, with that lane. Yeah, I think it's going to be a it's going to be a bit of a, a challenge, I think, for Lissandra to really be a threat to uh, Zio at this stage. Like, you can't like well, if you think about Lissandra, like she's so good at like slowing you, snaring you, and escaping, right? But yeah. Aurelia has a passive that just says, well, screw that. Like, I don't care about your slows. I don't care about your snares. They don't really do much to me. So, like, Asandra, it'll work out okay. Like, you'll be able to farm pretty well. I, I would say until maybe Zao starts to build up that Triforce, then it'll become a little bit difficult. But he can stay safe and farm from the back like this, as you're seeing. He's missing on quite a bit of CS, though, as you can see, because of uh, not wanting to get too close into melee range. Yeah, and there's always that threat. When you're playing against an Aurelia, you don't want to be sat next to... Uh... Looks like actually actually in the middle lane. That can, that's, that can wait. Avenue's going to get the last auto attack to finish off the first blood. And he paid a heavy price, but it was well worth it. It looks like Elise going to do the same thing in that top lane. Not going to be able to quite able to connect the cocoon, though. Flash is forced, though, as Koi backs away to safety. And uh, now I can finish that point I was going to make is that you just don't want to stand next to low health minions. That is the problem. And as soon as I finish that sentence, it looks like Corky may be in trouble. Looking to do something, Cedrian trying to connect onto Corky. He's going to do just that. One more auto attack will secure it. The, the heal is baited out, though, and suddenly he is forced away. Heal used of his own. He's going to be taken away. Auto attack from Sona secures it. The flash was there just to ensure the range was there. And I mean, oh, Cedrian baited in by Bro Baroki and Sazed. <laughs> and, you know, Baroki? you said like seven different ways to say his name. I've heard. <laughs> Baroki, Baroki, Baroki. I've heard like Baro Broski, Broski. I've heard Brokely. <laughs> eventually, eventually, we'll we'll find a They're name for him. They're not particularly good names. I'm not gonna lie. 
Baroki? I'm Brokey. sorry. Brokey. Yeah, yeah. But why is it spelt like Broski? There's no S. From my eyes, it looked okay. I'm just looking at. I thought I had a bad eye. I'm looking at blurry screen. Maybe I need to look at the glasses. We do it together. Let's Be do contact it. buddies. Um, but either way, as you can see, you know, faculty. Yeah, a bad start. But let's keep in mind, they've had a bad start every game. Yeah. Every game, even in their 2-0 <laughs> sweep that they had happened a little bit earlier on, they always just power through towards that late game, and are almost are undefeatable or undefeated, I should say, so far. Yeah, and they're no strangers to a deficit. I think they're going to be uh, quite happy just playing their own games. And you can see the CS isn't pretty, isn't really affecting them too much. Only actually Soz Perfect who's struggling in that mid lane. I think, of course, in that Syndra matchup, it's going to be very tough as an Oriana. I'd, probably, I'd, start maxing, I'd start maxing E if I was him. I just think that the damage that Avenue can output is going to be such a threat that, I mean, you just keep farming, max your E, take as little damage as you can while you farm, and focus on perhaps just the other lanes getting, getting farmed up instead. But, I mean, look at that CS discrepancy in the top lane as well. 54 to 38. What happened there, though? Lissandra was supposed to be kind of farming quite safely, and Zio somehow, and now he's coming back with a Phage as well, it's going to be even more so, is, uh, is actually kind of dealing out a good deal of damage to Lissandra. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, let's see, she's actually leveling up Heaton style again, so going for that true damage. Uh, and then, uh, unfortunately, Koi missed out on a major wave that was shoved into his turret um, because he had to go back to base. And, of course, he doesn't have his flash either, so a regain could come in very soon. And now Sedjang probably going to play a little bit safer on this bomb as a Sheen picked up for Brokey, so trying to be super aggressive, trying to get some extra burst damage in there. And uh, hopefully be able to pick up the win off of that one. But either way, we're going to have Jungler start to hit level 6. You can see Zoe, or Zoe, now hitting that marker. I'm waiting to see where he's going to gank if he goes for the first one. Top has teleport, or sorry, has teleport and flash. Mid has no flash or heal. So to me, that's definitely going to be the lane you want to have uh, you know, to make your hit on. It's just all about letting that stun out of Syndra. Yeah, and then Avenue is just going to have to kind of play the Wayne game in terms of mana. He's got so little in his uh, mana pool at the moment, but Blue Buff will change that very quickly. And uh, Sos Perfect, I think he's playing very passively. And his CS represents that, but it also means he's nice and safe from these uh, soy ganks. It looks like Pantheon is turning his attention towards top lane. This could be a pretty uh, risky dive. Of course, diving in a radio is always a risk when you know she gets that stun under turret. In fact, he realizes that that's probably not the wisest decision and actually opts to return to base. And uh, Syndra's doing exactly the same thing. Some shopping is going to be completed, though. The Morellanomicon going over to Syndra and uh, Avenue. It's an item we're going to be seeing mm -hmm. an awful lot of at the moment. That's 20% CDR straight off the bat. And uh, he's going to be even more of a threat now. In that's that weird. So, Zoe, I think he was trying to take away red buff from Obvious. But as we can see, Obvious started red. So, they should have known that, though. It's so perfect not having blue buff in middle. They should have been like, oh, since he doesn't have blue buff and it's already this late in the game, they probably took red or probably started red. So, I think that was a little bit of a mistake out of Zoe there. Uh, trying to go for the steal. Either way, trying to deny a couple of camps as well. Trying to go for the, uh, the, gr the, gr the Krugs. But, unfortunately, they were not up at the time here. But still, he's level 6. He can get continually, or he can go for a gank here anytime soon. And yet he's still just kind of farming away here. Obviously, he wants to keep his red buff. And we might finally see him go in here in just a few seconds. Yeah, I think the man drop is... Uh, the potential for a man drop, of course, they're actually looking like the bot lane are actually pretty pushed up under their turret. Top lane, perhaps a better bet. But this sustained Lucian is a bit of a threat at the moment. Every time it looks like Corky's going to be out putting a huge amount of damage, Soraka just says, nope, and heals him back up. Ambulance Soraka. Bad time to be here, bro. Avenue on his way down bot lane, trying to support this uh, Corky Sona lane. I don't think they're really going to be able to receive it. As he's off back to mid lane. As they quite happily farming under their turret. Zio going to be, once again, applying pressure in that top lane. Look at this CS discrepancy. It's getting bigger and bigger by the second as he's just blade surging around, finishing off these minions. We just shot about a lane too. So he's able to force a complete back, and you see he's still very healthy on mana. Oh, nice little dodge with the Blade Surge right there. But he has no threat in this lane. 30 CS lead. He's going to be able to build up his, uh, Ooh, his sheen. sheen in just a few seconds. Let's just go for Boots and go for like Burnt Treads or Berserker Greaves. I would assume Ber Berserker Greaves would be the route he wants Zero? to go. Yeah, I'll go for a little bit of attack speed. Maybe an extra lucky crit in there too. And still, Zoe, I want to see him gank. Like, one thing that made Pantheon so strong in the jungle, looks like he actually will go towards the bottom lane here, was the fact of having like a Leona as a support. Because if you ever gank that lane with a Leona support, you're guaranteed to just destroy him and leave oh, that flash away from wow. Crescendo. That's two ultimates now down. That's uh, a flash down as well here out of Sazed. And he's 0 for 1 here so far. That was some quick fingers from both of the bot lanes. Soraka and Lucian just darting out of that one, realizing that this is going to be an all or nothing play. And as I think they almost flashed before Sona did. They knew what was coming. And they got out of there. 
uh, as you I mean, you heard my girly kind of exhale as I saw what was going to go down in that bot lane. Anyway, moving on. You're right about Pantheon. Feels like he's not really. In fact, Zoya on anything that he's been playing seems to be a lot if, a lot more passive than perhaps uh, obvious has been for end faculty. But saying that again, we haven't seen at least too much. Perhaps actually really, really kind of providing the majority of our attention to that top lane, just trying to make sure Aurelia has a good time because uh, mid to late game Aurelia is horrible to play against. Especially when you're a team that relies quite a lot on CC and lockdowns, and Aurelia just laughs in the face of lockdowns. I'm going to see if Zayo's going to go at wit's end, actually, in this game. A little bit of magic resist, but he needs some health, so I'm going to be going for like a Spirit Massage or a Banshee's Veil soon. Has to start against his double AP combo, but I'm going to come in and look for the kill. And Zayo, this is going to be a true test if he can survive this. This is going to be tough. Cindero and Ignite ticket away. It's going to be Koi's as he picks that one up. And uh, he's going to be pretty thankful for his mid laner avenue. Just gifting him that one, realizing that Sandra really could use a little help in the right direction, a little nudge. He, he still almost survived that. Like, there was still a chance he could have maybe have gotten away. Like, that's how like tanky he still is at this point. Yeah, and with what? I mean, he, he's got a little bit of health from Phage. That's about it. That's all that's really keeping him up. And then it's kind of just the tankiness from Aurelia, but also the lack of damage being output by that double door and Fiendish Codex. Was really, it took a while. It took a while to take him down, but regardless, she did, and it's three for zero. And Faculty yet to uh, get off the starting line is already three kills in a turret in favor of playing ducks. Pantheon going to be able to clear out the ward towards Dragon. I want to see where Koi's going to go. Like uh, Having Koi be able to roam around the map now is so damn like difficult to deal with for Faculty. Like Lucian, Soraka, Orianna, if you see it, that that double dive combo out of Syndra and and uh, Lissandra, it can completely destroy you. Like This is the threat with that turret being now gone. I mean, Zao obviously will have time to free farm. So that's, that, that's the other side of that sword. That's the other edge of the sword. But if they pick up quite a few kills here and you know pick up a dragon or two and start to snowball this game, it's going to be very hard for Infaculty to come back in it. I think you're right. And I think Infaculty, yes, they play kind of uh, well from a deficit. But um, it's going to be interesting if, you know, from the back of this deficit, they can actually make anything happen. Because at this stage in the game, this is kind of... It's, it's the time for them to kick into gear. 13 minutes in and... And faculty looking a little lackluster. Hmm. Did Mountain ult Sayo when you got ganked on the top side? I'm not sure. I'm trying to think if he did or not. But I mean, that could have been something that kind of kept him alive. Obviously, the ignite was down. So actually, no. His ultimate removes the ignite, uh, like the grievous wound factor. So. I see hindsight. It's a little bit difficult. Uh, I can't remember if it actually was used. But either way, you can see, playing ducks already strong here. Already got going on. As you can see, about a two, 1.5 thousand gold lead. That's a 36 lead middle, so the CS discrepancy top lane is completely mitigated by Syndra in mid. Like, so Avenue's doing, is really making up for the slack. Not really slack, but making up for Koi's performance currently. Yeah, certainly. I mean, Koi isn't underperforming. He's sat on 100 CS, hasn't died, got a kill. So it's all it's all good in the hood. About 30 CS really separating him from uh, Aurelia, but I mean, that's not the worst news that they could be hearing, obviously. Just three kills in it, but the gold lead is staggering. 21,000 to 18, or make it just 19 now as it ticks over. As uh, At 14 minutes, that's a huge discrepancy. And so it will be interesting to see if that can be rectified by the uh, end faculty side. As Sona just rolls a hand across the keyboard. I, I heard that's exactly how you play Katarina. <laughs> Zing. And uh, the Katarina we saw earlier as well. <laughs> it was pretty true, though. I mean, yeah. just like hit all... If you ever seen the videos of Scar getting pentakills, you literally just hear him... Just the whole time, smashing. just smashing his keyboard. I didn't want to do it to my own because it would have messed things up, but that's all he does, and it works. Like, that's what's so funny about it, but obviously we'll be spot up by the ward here trying to come in towards the bomb side, so it won't actually happen. Though, Zoe, like, this is a perfect time for him to counter gank this. Like, they know he's there. Let bottom lane bait it in because there's, like, no real CC to stop this, and it looks like he might, in fact, be going this for it here. This is the one. Let's see. Is he going to drop? Or is he going to run to try, but should be spotted? Syndra. Oh, on the, the way as well. The ward just disappeared. Oh, man. So we will back off instead. Oh, and so, so it's all hanging in the balance. Of course, that dragon is up. And at that 15 minute mark, you want to start picking up these drakes. You want to get the uh, stack buff stacking as fast as possible. And neither team really making a move for it at this stage. It's surprising. I mean, I'm trying to, I, I wish I had knew what the earliest dragon we'd seen today was. I think we probably saw one around the 10 minute mark in that fiddle sticks game. But uh, I think we saw even one earlier than that. You did? I think we did. Okay. So yeah, we've seen earlier dragons and I think it's always worth mentioning that statistic, which I've probably mentioned every single time. Uh, Almost. <laughs> we battle with Drakes. And that's just the... I remember there was a statistic I always had. 
that was like Joe always brought it up. It was teams who have ten percent or ten percent of a gold lead yeah. or their opponents win like nine percent of the games. Nine at, at the twelve minute mark. Okay, well if, like that. if that statistic was correct, we would be seeing uh, the ducks take this one. But that was like way that was like a, like <laughs> season two. It's all changed now. Yeah. And that's uh, the beauty of League. Everything is different now. If someone just start, started playing this game sometime soon, they'd be like, so why is there a crab and what's happening? Why, is the, why does this look pretty now? What's going on? In the meantime, Zayo trying to do something in this top lane. Look at the damage he does. Koi just falling down, forced to claw away. And that's the Triforce Aurelia for you. You turn Dragon picked up by Zoy. Yeah, easy peasy for him. No one really there to dispute it. You can see the uh, mid laner and support both recalled at the same time, and it just meant there was uh, three members on the map that had a chance to dispute, and, well, they just didn't want to risk it. Not even for a biscuit? Not even for a biscuit. Nice chocolate digestive. Ugh, chocolate. Mm, gross. Digestive. As you can see, <laughs> Zaho, stay on top of a ward there in that bush. So, not going to be tough where it's coming anytime soon, but Tron obviously distanced himself from Zaya. Doesn't want to get too close to him, because as we just saw, the damage that can be done, you know, a 33 CS difference, the Triforce being done as well, and now he's going to get really tanky here in the next few minutes. And he's a real threat. I mean, you're, you're, you're going to be forced to put so much CC down on him, and if you don't kill him, he will just wreak havoc across your entire team. Luckily, for them, they have a potential amount of control, or a, a huge amount of control and burst in their team. But again, like I said before, the control doesn't matter much to Aurelia. The damage does. And if he builds magic resist now, I don't feel like Brokey's really going to be able to do too much to him. I think you're right. I think it's uh, at this stage, with an Aurelia with a radio of the Triforce, probably going to be, let have a look at their team, double AP, probably going to be heading down on their magic resist route uh, as a second item. We'll see. And uh, Boots are no, no, no doubt going to be the Merc Treads. So, uh, I don't know. You don't? There is a possibility for Berserker Greaves. For extra attack speed, because if he's building defensive items, like if he goes towards the Zephyr, he gets the the, the tenacity. I think he could. Eh. But Merc Tread just gives him the MR and that tenacity, so it's like. Yeah, the Berserkeries make it so you don't have to build another damage item though, and go straight to MR. True. I, know, I think I think I think you're right. I think we'll see Merc Treads. I, I would love to see Berserker Greaves though, because like he can already one v one Koi. Easily. And he's gonna keep applying the pressure. Like, if he wants to split push, then I would say Berserker Greaves are the way to go. Oh, Koi, why did he cancel that? Risky. Oh, that drop. is why. Here comes the pain. Pantheon onto Lissandra. That's a big AoE damage. And Koi gets away with just a fraction of his health bar left. So Mandra finally makes, able to make something happen here on that top side. That's 5-0 lead here for Plain Ducks. But even with that lead, oh, actually up about almost 3,000 gold. So they've been able to build up quite a bit here. And again, I do want to re you know, restate the faculty. They've had, strong st uh, they've had bad starts almost every single game now. And yet they still came out and won in a 2-0 sweep. So you can't count them out ever in this one. But then we have to think about again, like, are they going to show any secret strats right now, you know, potentially into the late game of this one that they could give away before the expansion tournament? And uh, I just don't think they will. I think you're right. And I think it may very well cost them uh, this game, if not the match. Because they're so hesitant. They're like, oh, but what if we need this? What if we need that? And they're kind of uh, almost second guessing themselves. They can't really make decisions. And in the meantime, bot lane continuing to farm away as uh, perhaps they're going to be well aware that we're gonna, as we reach the 20-minute mark, they should be making a move towards Obvious and Swords Perfect. They're going to get away pretty much damage-free as they're a little late to the party on that blue buff. In the meantime, Obvious actually making good moves in that jungle. He's got, I think it's, that's the Juggernaut. He's gone for the Juggernaut. Don't want to say that wrong yet. Of course, going green, going for the Juggernaut, and uh, just going for that tanky Elise build. So they realize that their front line may not be particularly huge, considering we've seen Mundos in the past, but it's still strong. And look at the damage Zayo can output. Koi is uh, forced to back off, and I don't think he... I mean, I think Zayo was well aware that there was a Lissandra ultimate still yet to be seen, and they want to risk diving for that, but... There's potential. Clearing that wave as fast as he can. He knows that he can stop Lissandra's recall and get that turret shoved in as fast as he possibly can. And he's going to do just that. Ziu, conscious of the enemy jungler presence, but he knows he can dive this one. The wave's going to be tanking that turret for him as long as possible. Can he make the move onto Koi instead? No, opting to pressure that turret as much as he can. And Lissandra's wave clear just a little too strong. Well, also, Syndra coming in through the river here. Going to be able to get the stun as Zyle popped ultimate as well. Lissandra comes in. And Zyle's a dead man again. 
And in the meantime, so it's perfect. I mean, shove that middle lane, get some damage in there, gank bottom. Like, he's not following his mid laner up towards the top side of the river. And maybe can you kill the Scuttle Crab a little bit more? Maybe you put a ward somewhere on the map to swap this out. And Zio, I mean, he might be 0 and 3, but he's not that far behind in gold compared to his opponent right there. And perfect, just gonna flash. Mm. Not sure if that was needed. Well, there was no, there was no follow up. What was Panther gonna do? Just jump on him and then throw a spear? Game over. I think it's maybe like, uh, I don't know where Syndra is. Crap, 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 crap. Flash. It's possibility, no doubt about it. As, uh, nice use of your talisman there. I was going to say, I'm interested to see what Mountain was going to do with that. Absolutely nothing is the answer. Talisman, Sight Stone, just the tier one boots so far completed for him. Yeah, she doesn't really need like tier two boots because of the whole running towards someone that has 40% move speed or towards someone that's below 40%, you gain a ridiculous amount of move speed kind of thing. I think she's more than happy to sit on those, invest in some items a little bit earlier on, and even Koi kind of ward up here in towards the red buff. So, Sexy. trying to get a, couple, a little bit of deep wards down. He has a zone he's now completed. I still say Zayo can beat him though, 1v1. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Even though he's it's at 0 to 3, Lysandra at 3 to 0, that, all that is is a statement about the jungle support or even just the mid laner support. It's actually been a lot more uh, the Syndra presence that's actually put the lane in this current state it, it's in. Look at the cooldown. Like, Q, 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 Q. Well, when you it's got Merlin Nomicon, that's 20% cool already. 2.25 second cooldown. Yeah. And he's, like, not going to run out of mana either. Never going to run out of mana. Once you've got the Morellos, it's going to be enough. And, I mean, yeah, I understand it. Once you get 40% CDR, that Q is... I mean, it's not. there is barely a cooldown for it. And so you can constantly spam that one. And look at that. Quite in trouble, but not enough trouble. I think that's turret's going to be a safe haven for him. I say that. The ult comes in. Zio knows he's in trouble, but look how long it lasts. No time at all. And that is the power of the Merc Treads as well as Aurelia, of course. See, it's smart to do this because now he has to go back. Like, Zao can dive this easily because there's no ultimate up again. He has Flash. They both have Flash right now. Uh, Dragon could potentially be done soon by either one of the teams, which, as you can see, they're kind of just being baited in at this point. And right now, they're going to let this one go. They're going to. Wait, why? Are you really trading a Dragon for a turret? Is it just one turret? Well, it might be two, but still. Why would you trade. Because the top turret was done, but yet you—I don't understand that. Two turrets for a dragon is not a bad poor it's, exchange. I don't—I don't agree. I don't agree. I mean, that's the they second. Were, they were to get the top turret anyways, like because I went back, right? Or Koi went back, but to give that up completely—I mean, in the end, it's like if you don't feel confident in fighting it, you might as well take a turret. But you should be more about contesting the dragon than just giving even, it away. Yeah, even just being present would have probably made that dragon more difficult for the enemy team. I think you're right. They could have done more, but taking the two turrets is not a poor start. Or, well, I say start, and we're 23 minutes in, but that's... Uh, <laughs> well, now the game's finally starting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, with only six kills in. But, uh, yeah, no, those two those two turrets are going to kind of level out the gold somewhat. Still, though, 37,000 to just 34. It's a pretty strong advantage for the team sat on six kills. We'll see. Mountain on a vision clearing mission. Those little bananas just... just, just I, I imagine this is the voice they should have used, like... Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, She's throwing these uh, swirly, glowy bananas at the random pieces of wood on the map. It's like it's like her staff's too heavy. Like She's like... Uh, oh, it's like, oh, it's oh, like tennis. One. She nearly got another one. Oh, flash for flash exchange. We actually managed to still connect the stun, but Zorak is just going to talisman away from that one. As uh, she'll save her fruit for another day. Oh. So far, you can see CS difference in mid lane's kind of closed up a little bit. Obvious. He'll be fine here with the help of that turret, but they will lose the blue buff here. So it's perfect. Won't have it. And well, he's built cooldown action. He has nothing to Holy Grail, so he's fine in terms of that. And more importantly, Avenue has been able to have a blue buff up for almost an entire game here. And he's actually looking to catch out Mountain. He hits a stun. It could be. Oh, he misses the oh, stun. Misses the, the follow up as well here. And the ultimate coming in and the man drop. He wasted two big ultimates for almost nothing off of that. And Zio, again, he's still more than happy to keep pushing this top lane and going in for a Hex Drinker. And if someone doesn't stop him, like if someone doesn't punish him, this is going to be ridiculously bad for the side of playing Ducks. I mean, he's spotted right now. That's actually a really cheeky, perfect spot to put it. Because obviously you're going to clear here. You're never going to clear here. It's a smart play. Good read into that one. That's a good ward. Fantastic. So uh, we're about to well and truly known. Zio 
going to be... Uh, I mean, you, you've already highlighted just how dangerous he could be. And it feels weird to say, oh, yeah, he's dangerous. You look at his score, 0 3 zero, But he's got his gold elsewhere, 243 CS. He's on par with his mid laner. And after having a lane like that, that can, that can be tough. But he's back in it. Well, so back in it. He's always been in it. As now Koi and uh, Zeo are going to try and make a move up in that top lane. Hmm. Well, right now you can see a little bit of a lull in the action. I was not trying to fight anytime soon here, but Plain Dogs, I feel like they could force the fights, but then again, they're waiting for Avenue's ultimate to come back, which uh, which it has. They go over on the other side. And of course, they might actually be walking right into a bush, though. You can see, obviously, the ward that we just saw in the top hand, top left-hand side of your screen has spotted them going down towards this. They haven't really spotted them come out of it as well, but it looks like they might be able to turn this around and push in for a little bit of action here soon. Yep, let's find out where this one goes. I mean, they're, they're kind of, they think they've got the element of surprise, but that ward is telling a different story. The stun doesn't connect, but the claw does. Lissandra doing her best. The repel is there. Koi trying his best to eliminate at least the spider. Does go down the water spout, but look at the shockwave. That's a four-man shockwave. So it's perfect, doing his best to survive. The TP is coming in as the summoner hill does as well. As spells burn left, right, and center. Two men down to zero. As Zeno does get connected with the stun. Not going to last too long, though. The magic of tenacity in Aurelia means that that stun is going to do nothing but delay her escape. 8-0 to zero now. P and PD are really leading uh, the freight in terms of kills, but also gold in general. Zero not going to get caught off by that stun this time. He's not going to fall for the same trick one twice. As uh, going to do something in this mid lane. And faculty on the back foot, no doubt about it. Sazed. And Koi, well, in fact, the entire enemy team, uh, the entire, sorry, uh, PD side are just going to be recalling from that one. They realize that this is not a fight they need to fight. And then Faculty yet to get off the starting line in terms of kills. Look at that, zero. That zero is going to be uh, playing on their minds somewhat in this one. As the longer this one goes, the uh, more difficult it's going to be to uh, get their teeth back into this game. Some shopping has been done. In the meantime, we see the Aegis, of course, on Elise. And actually, interesting purchases for Syndra going straight away for that Void Staff. Knows he needs to munch through all of that MR that could possibly be uh, going on. And, of course, the Gravadon's Death Cap on Sol's perfect. So he's going to actually be outputting quite a fair bit of damage now. As Ariana, and I mean, as we approach that later game, it's uh, we know all too well the power of a late game Ariana as uh, the damage just goes a little too much. That shockwave can be game-changing, and uh, Sol's perfect. He's been pretty quiet so far in his lane, but he's got a Rabadon, he's got an Athenes, he's got the both the cooldown reduction, he's got the uh, ability power. He's going to be a big threat now. 15 seconds till Dragon is up, so keep that in the back of your minds as they look to be clearing waves in that mid lane. And now, looks like... PD are trying to do what they failed to do the first time. I say failed, they managed to pick up two kills, but it wasn't quite the trap that they planned on setting. Baron is under screw, and he looks like they're trying to do something, but I think faculty realized that that would be almost suicidal at this stage with a full standing uh, playing duck side on their heels. I can see still, I mean, we have yet to have a kill for in faculty here, and I'm just, I'm kind of, I'm not really amazed. I mean, that shockwave that came in was huge. It just wasn't enough damage, unfortunately, to finish off anyone, and no one was even low to begin with. That was just pretty much all his damage alone here, and well, the death cap's obviously done, so he has a nice little bit of a power spike, but again, they're going to lose another dragon here. That's going to be the third sack, that 5% movement speed coming in, and I feel like in faculty, they might have... I'm not sure that they're mortal. Like, I expect them to actually win both games in a 2-0 sweep, but maybe it's because they don't want to show too much here just yet in terms of like what they've been sneaking away, what they've been practicing for the expansion. Yeah, I think you're uh, you're, you're kind of hitting the nail on the head with this one. I think and faculty, they're trying to play these safe picks that they're not planning on kind of presenting at the expansion tournament. Of course, obviously, 2,500 euros on the line is no laughing matter, but it's not a spot in the LCS. So... They're going to be keeping those ones safely tucked away. You've already said that like, even if it comes down to it, if they do lose out on this first map, they're not going to do anything particularly outrageous because they want to keep that one under wraps. Yeah, I mean, 
If I were in their shoes, I would do the same exact thing. Like, I would not show too much. I mean, 2,500 euros versus an LCS contract. You know, that's that's easy a decision for either team, for anyone out there. And uh, as I want to get punished yet again, coming in from the backside, free kills. Not sure he's going to escape this one. And he should be going down for his fourth death. Oh, nice little chick move comes out of him, though. But we'll get stood up there by Sazed. So now, like, what, his team, what is his team doing? Like, why aren't they pressuring middle? Why aren't they pressuring bottom? Why aren't they doing something to capitalize off of where, what, you know, a four-man, five-man gank onto Zio? Yeah, and that shows just how concerned they are with this Aurelia. Well, Sadrian could be in trouble. Looks like he's got the Soraka in to keep him safe. Forced to flash and heal away from this Pantheon. Another flash forced. Look at that, the man drop. Forcing two summoner spells. Make it three summoner spells, actually. As, uh, I mean, I don't know if Sedrin meant to, but he literally hit every summoner he had. I uh, don't know if the heal was necessary, but regardless, Zoyu forced to recall as he is mannerless, and a mannerless pantheon is no man whatsoever. Nine for zero, Jason. Every time I look up to the top of that scoreboard, I'm just like, wait, what? And faculty so far behind. Uh, in b both terms of gold and kills. One thing it shows me, though, is, like, the difference in caliber of teams in Germany. Like, say in faculty, if they had a 9-0 lead, they would have closed this game out by now. But it shows how good, you know, and how much of a difference there is in skill between the two teams that they can still drag it out and not obviously let Playing Ducks finish the game the way they want to. And Playing Ducks, it doesn't feel like they're making a... Oh, this could be it. Obviously, Dr Baron, we've seen... I think this, is, this would possibly be the third time we've seen a, a winning team finally take Baron and end up finishing up the game, but they're just so cautious. End Faculty playing the vision game so beautifully means that they could possibly get caught. Oh, yeah, Koi's going aggressive, and he goes just perfectly onto Mountain of all people. I'm not sure why, but Soraka does get taken down from that one. It was a bit of an all-in just for a support. And we'll see if that's going to be the uh, number advantage they need to make a move for both Baron or perhaps even just that top lane turret. Soraka, though, I, I, I want to say that's worth it just because of if you go into an extended fight against Soraka, she will just out-sustain your team no matter what you have. As the amount of healing that she can apply, and if she lands those cues, she can keep herself sustained as well on top of that. In times out, trying to push bottom, the crescendo comes in, lands across two, and they will force flashes out of them back in a way, but they'll still pick themselves up another turret. Zao still pushing bottom, looking for maybe another turret here. He can take them down extremely quickly, but can his three-man squad at the top lane hold them back? And it looks like they're not even going to be going for the inhibitor turret, and they're going to be able to let this one fall. Will they go for Baron? No, they're just backing away. I'm surprised uh, to not odd. see them go for something. Plain Ducks seem to be given these like little kind of slight opportunities, and I admit they are slight, and all they seem to do is just let them f slip by. We haven't seen one real kind of, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to say aggressive, I don't think that's the right word, but uh, they're not being particularly proactive in their approach to this game, and uh, instead they're letting them faculty catch up, and you have to remember, once we start hitting that 18 mark, and it's 18, level, level 18 mark, there we go, uh, it's going to be kind of this advantage that they do have and are currently sat on is going to become pretty null. Let's see, we can see Broki now with the Trinity Force Bloodthirster, BF Sword going towards Infinity Edge. Has a lot of damage behind him. Again, Zio is still very strong in general. I mean, look at that CS difference. He's got about a 60 lead over his opponent in the top lane. He's got still quite a few items, 1600 gold to spend on, and he's just constantly shoving this bottom lane. Like, this is what he's doing. He's trying to force some indecision out of playing ducks because they're not making a commitment for Baron for anything here. And you see Pantheon to go back to base. See so now obviously the Sandra trying going back to deal with them. And Zao's just gonna shove in. Realizes he has all the time in the world to work with here. As long as he keeps scrying orbit and checking it, you know, he might get an inhibitor turret for free. I think he might do. Just Lissandra to stop and we see how this matchup went once before. So Zai's having none of it. He's like, yeah, root me, ult me, I dare you. Yeah, he's just gonna just keep hitting that turret as fast as he can. He gets it. And if he gets away from this one, I I don't think he will. In fact, he is gonna try and TP away. He knows Lissandra's got nothing to stop it. In fact, actually does actually get cancelled instead of having to flash away. He's gonna zip back. Oh no. No, he's oh, Koi's stopping the chase. Okay, yeah, having none his, of it. He has his uh his E back up. I'm surprised he didn't continue for that one. So he gets inhibitor for free. Now it's Helper coming into Baron Pick because he realizes he can continue to go for this one here. The Colin coming from the side though to fo uh, force them back. And this is going to be a bold, bold move if they can pull it off. This is what they needed to do. And Obvious does get stunned up by Pantheon and managed to repel away. Or I think it was actually a flash away. And uh, Baron falling low. So he gets a free inhibitor. He doesn't get taken down. And Plain Ducks get nothing out of it. Like. <laughs> and look I, at that gold lead. That should never happen. Look at it. Look at that gold lead. It's getting closed off. And faculty, a team who have been no doubt on the back foot since first blood, are still very much in this. And Playing Ducks finally looking to make a move for this Baron, but they know there's an entire enemy team just on the uh, back line. 
potentially looking to steal this one away. Obvious does have a smite up. He's going to be looking to get his fast fingers on that one. You can't. It's so hard oh, to take a This is such a risk. This is such a risk. The Shockwave comes in. They're trying to steal it away. Blue team have none of it. As PD finally come in with the Baron they've been so desperate for. Koi could be in trouble though. Silenced up. Can't quite claw away from that. Of course, Sereka pretty strong up against Alessandra because you have that ability to just silence her escape. But I don't know why. I have no idea why Obvious didn't go in. You have a jungler with an execution, which makes it ridiculously easy to finish off an objective like that. Versus a Pantheon who just has auto attacks. Like, that easily could have been a steal. Could have, would have, should have. We'll see. That's the Baron. Enhanced Baron recall is so, so good to listen to. As they're going to be uh, going back to base, stocking their pockets with a couple of extra items. You can see some MR for both sides picked up as a Spectre's Cow for both Elise and Pantheon, both the junglers. Looking to make themselves a little more resistant. As they just continue to gather their resources, gather their uh, troops and perhaps hit, make their way towards mid lane. Looks like that's going to be the plan and they should have made this move so long ago. But, I mean, credit where it's due, Zio on Aurelia has been such a strong presence. Just by drawing back and kind of making uh, playing ducks kind of second guess their positioning and their, their plans. And looks like the Mandrops coming in. This is going to be a bloodbath. Sol's perfect just gets destroyed, disintegrated and diabolically removed. As now they're looking for more, looking for some extra blood. It cost them two ultimates to get one kill, and we'll see how, how worthwhile that is. It's just the Baron buff, just one enhanced cannon minion is going to be tickling that turret to death. Unless, of course, they can connect onto Zyre, but look how short that stun is. It's almost insane that Aurelia, you just cannot focus your CC on her. I mean, the Lissandra lasts for like 0.5 of a second. What else have you got in your arsenal? As they are making a move for this inner, but look at the power of Baron. As the second cannon minion joins the party, they're going to be looking to do the same thing. Look at that fat wave in that top lane. That is going to be a real party town. Is that, two, is that two? Yeah, three cannon minions are all about to be enhanced by that Baron. And they're going to try and make a move for that one. Of course, Soz Perfect is going to be back for this one. He is going to have a shock wave. And so we'll see where this team fight takes us. Here they come. Dylan. And you talk about wave clear here. It's up to the Orianna. You're kind of loose in here, but. That turret just falling really quickly on the backside. And they have to go for a fight here soon. They have to commit for it or they're just going to lose the game outright. And look at that. Mountain almost getting burst down completely. Oh, there it is. Avenue does secure the kill. And now out just trying to run away, trying to survive this one. As you can see, trying to go to the backline, trying to kill Brokey, gets the stun. And that's a last-ditch effort here. As the stun comes in a Sedrum, but again, the quick QSS comes in, saves his life for now. For now, certainly. And we are seeing a huge amount of like a, a ultimates and a huge amount of cooldowns put into taking Mountain out of the game. And I think they realize that in these team fights, Soraka is providing so much sustain and healing that she's actually a real priority target. And they're managing to make it work. And obviously, getting a nice 2 for 0 tr trade off there. As they're going to be back away with their two inhibs quite happily, as uh, a casual Infinity Edge is picked up for Brokey. I'm surprised to see them actually not try to finish the game there. I thought they probably could have. They had. Safe and sound, I guess. They just want to take it slowly. But no, I guess they can. I mean, <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, no harm in it. You can see the CS in the top lane, obviously, obviously as well. You know, Koi, he was getting shut out pretty hard earlier on, has got back into the game, but that's also Zio at a 0 5 scoreline, which obviously isn't his fault. It's just kind of, he's been ganked constantly over and over again, and obviously hasn't been there to kind of counter. And, you know, I wonder how the game would have went if Zio got a kill early, or he got a little bit more help because. You can see the damage he's able to do. Like, he has re pretty damn strong items considering, the, you know, the, the point in the game here. But we're about to hit that 40-minute mark. Two inhibitors now down here. And the faculty, they have to defend this last one. They can't even do anything about this turret here. And they have to commit for a fight or it's, it's going to be over anyways. And we'll see how far that gets them. So, a little bit of vision clearage, but I think the main priority is going to be this remaining inhib. That crystal spinning, but for how long? There's already the Baron buff enhanced minions are making their way towards that turret. Mandrop is not quite ready. In fact, no, it is. I'm telling a porcupine. As is Syndra, they've got all their ultimates they need. Crescendo, Lissandro, they've got all the team fight ingredients. But can they bake the game one cake? We'll find out. As they just seem to be darting around. Great wave clear, of course, provided uh, by that kind of Oriana and Lucian combination. And this is where I really want to start seeing Banner Command. You know, like, we have these... Well, if they have the Baron buff. Baron, Baron buff enhanced minions. Obviously, being immune to magic damage would be so interesting to see if that's effective. Uh, I don't really know how effective it would be, but potential is there. In the meantime, though, that turret is time to take a bit of a beating. 
it's only a matter of time. The Superman is pushing top side, pushing middle as well. Lucian trying to do the best he can. This inhibitor turret is gonna fall very quickly. The crescendo comes out nicely, and they're gonna fight. They're gonna try their best. Sauce perfect once again, hit by the Sandra, but she's not going down this time. It's a two for two exchange, and they're looking for more. Pantheon taking heavy damage, but Sona's there to keep him alive or keep him away from the grave for just a little longer as they back away from this one. Aurelia down for both Syndra and Lissandra. Good flat exchange. And they're looking to perhaps take this in him once more. Look at this damage. Oh my lord, Corky does a lot. Rocket doesn't quite connect though. There's, they're going to have to be kind of very cautious and hesitant with this. They have the potential to take this inhib down. If they do, three inhibs down is going to be insanity. They, it's almost worth it. It's almost worth going in for it. They know that they need to back out though. Pantheon forced to flash away. There's, the dust begins to settle. We're reached that 40 minute mark and just that inhib needs one bullet. Something from Corky to take it down. But they know they can't risk it as well, these cooldowns are going to be, these cooldowns, these respawn timers are going to be huge at the moment. Yes, they are. And as you can see, Avenue and Koi still down for quite a while as they're finally going to be able to get back up here in just a few, but I'm, I'm got to get credit. Got to get credit to the side of, of and faculty for holding on this long. I mean, 42 minutes in, they've been down this entire game. They were able to close that gold gap a little bit earlier on. Obviously, now it's not as close as it was prior. But again, you know, Zyro finally able to pick up a kill, picked up an assist. He still takes a lot of cooldowns on the other side to pick off. Like, it's not like you can just, you know, sneeze on him and he's gone, even with those six deaths. He was able to farm up consistently uh, throughout this entire game. It's just about whether or not the rest of the team can do work here. And, you know, if Souls Perfect hits a nice ultimate, they can completely shut down their team. Like, there's still a chance here for faculty to win this game. They're only down about four turrets, they're down four dragons. They need to kind of contest this one because with this fifth dragon going over to, to uh, Plain Duck's side, that should be the end of the game. Should be. We'll see. As they're looking for that fifth dragon, we know just how powerful that fifth dragon will be. It's just, it's like a permanent, nasty Baron buff. Do is it? I don't want to get this wrong. Hang on. I'm pretty sure it it's doubles. true damage over time. No, well, and well, doubles it's true damage, but it doubles everything they've already got. That's 10% movement speed. That's 30% damage to towers and buildings. And a 16% attack damage and ability power increase. That's, I mean, that's insane. That's half of a Rabadon's death cap for everyone. Uh, or the AD equivalent. But it looks like they're looking to rub salt into the already kind of gaping wound as they're perhaps looking to take down Baron. Looks like they will be able to pick it up without any contest. So, second dra uh, second barrier of the game, fifth dragon as well. And this, this is going to be this is going to be almost impossible to hold on to. Like we're going to finally see if a team can maintain this and Fnatic have to or not Fnatic. Wow, in fact, they need to pull off a perfect play here if they want to be able to hold this one back. They need a perfect crescendo, perfect you know silence snare everything coming out of them because you can see that they're burning and this they're hungry for their first map i mean to beat a team who's in the lcs expansion tournament like that would be a great morale boost for them and i, I really worry for the faculty coming into the second game and this is gonna be nasty they've got all their elixirs all of their items they've got a baron above they've got five stacks of dragon this is a team that really should not be defeatable we'll find out as they seem to be taking their time. Can a minion just like, all right, I'll free hit, free hit this. Yeah, look at the inhib just falling to just one minion. They can't let the inhibs fall. Like they have to fight for these uh, for every single inhib right now. Yeah, what's he gonna do? There's no front line. What's their front line? Elise, Elise sat there with a locket and a juggernaut. Not really gonna last too long, and that's just the power of these guys as they're just gonna back away, taking that inhib down from a distance because they're gonna do this slowly. They're gonna do this clinically, and they're gonna do this right. Hmm. And Faculty trying to wait out the buffs here, but Dragon and Baron just have too long left. And again, sorry, but they, they need to fight this. They can't afford to let another inhibitor go down. Teleport onto the minions. Zio from base with home guards. Well, won't be able to catch on to anyone. So that'll be unfortunately a little bit of a fail here. And then a wave maybe be starting shoved with super minions. That's nice inhibitor. It's going down quickly. It's going down fast. That's going to be the second inhib down now. Down and out. As this is a cannon minion. It has Baron minion is going to be doing its job. One more shot. One more purple blob. Oh, I'm not going to see it. As there it goes to bring that one down. And look at these guys, so cautious. They know that their uh, time is up. In fact, they've managed to hold on to this for so long. 45 minutes. This game should have been over in 30. But in fact, playing the uh, stronger game and perhaps the more of a case of just playing dogs looking weak. Nice stun from Syndra is just going to put them down for a short period of time. Instead, that third inhib's going down. They're doing this properly. They're doing it slowly. And Zio, fortunately, trying to do something. He's trying to make a move. The Shockwave does something, but Pantheon picks up a second. Looking for a third as well as Oriana evaporates. So does the Spider. And the last man standing is Lucian. And he's just going to have to sit and watch as the Nexus falls. And playing Ducks are going to advance with their first win. 
All right, so playing Ducks with a one map lead over their opponents and faculty now in the grand finals of EPS winner 2014 for the region of Germany. And again, unexpected. I, I had N Faculty to win this game pretty easily, but being down the entire time seemed to have taken its toll and caused it just to be a little bit too difficult to come back into it. But honestly, well played to them. Their, their double combo was a little bit risky to go for, but luckily they were able to punish Zio quite heavily uh, throughout majority of the game to prevent him from really picking up anything. Yeah, no doubt. I think uh, we were always highlighting Zio, and I mean, consider this, two kills. The entire time, we went 45 minutes, 19 to two, and N Faculty somehow managed to bring that game all the way to 45 minutes. That's not a statement about N Faculty. That, that was a game that they should have just been like, we were talking about this before, we're saying, yeah, that's a game they should just say, we lost, we accept it, and then move on to the next one. Instead, they brought that out to 45 minutes, and that's, that's playing mountain. ducks. That's, that's mountain, mountain on the right. <laughs> on the right. But yeah, playing ducks. Playing ducks, a team who, if, if you ask me, I mean, they did not finish that as quickly as they should have, and I don't know whether that's going to play on their minds as much as it, it perhaps could, but... They managed to bring map one, and that means they're just one step away, one map away. Yeah. From a they managed to win. Like that's that's, that's the key it. thing yeah, we're trying course. to say. I mean, it wasn't the prettiest way, but they still won. And obviously, we're going to map two in just a few minutes, guys. We're going to go to a quick break. We're also going to restart the stream because we know it's been lagging pretty bad. But hopefully, after this restart, we won't have any more problems for today. So, see you guys in hopefully about five ten minutes to kick off the second game. <laughs> 